Gordon, Lizette, are you guys as excited about the New Year's Eve special as I am? You know it, Steve. I mean, I know me and Drew are excited. We're both going to be there. And I think, Dylan, you're going to be there too, aren't you? You bet your shiny gold buttons I'll be there. <laughs> guys, do you know who else? Carmen, you are you are coming. I don't... I'm so excited. Yeah, me and Bobby wouldn't miss it for the world. So this is going to be our first time doing a live event and people that are listening can actually come in join the chat they can join in on a microphone or through text chat and they can actually be a part of it this is like the best way to end season one i lost my left shoe no, thinking about it, <laughs> it knock your socks off and i didn't even have those shoe. on in the first place so just a shoe, <laughs> just a shoe. <laughs> what time is this gonna start at so we're looking at because obviously we have to celebrate midnight so we're thinking around 10 or 10 30. we're gonna have more details to follow so this is really important if you want to be a part of our New Year's Eve special, you have to get on Discord or Reddit. You have to be a part of the community to be on. I, I can't explain how excited I am for us to be live. We're going to take your chats. You can join in on the call. Tell us what you like about the show, what you don't like. This is going to be the most interactive we've ever been with anybody. It's so exciting. <sighs> but Gordon, do you know what the real thing is? Is they have to have green room. Can you tell you them about green room? have to have green room. Green Room is a lovely addition to Spotify where we are able to go live and just be able to record with all of you guys listening in. You guys can ask to speak with us. You can join us. You can join in the live chat throughout the whole thing. We can bring you on so you can share your opinion on our podcast or just your opinion on some random BS like we love to do on our podcast and just and, chill with us all night. And Liza, do you know what the best part is? What's if that? you li- Are you a listener to Spotify? Yes. If you have a Spotify account, you can just ho- download the Green Room app and immediately create an account. How easy is that? Oh, okay. So it just ties into the account that you already have for Spotify. Exactly. It's perfect. It's going to be like a two-second download process and then a two-second sign-in process. Okay. Carmen... I don't know about you, but I would really think that it'd be cool if some of our listeners would like either join in on the voice chat or through text and tell us New Year's resolutions. Are you big on New Year's resolutions? Not so much on uh, resolutions, um, but I just love being with friends and family. And I think it would be a great time to have uh, more of our friends and family who are listening be a part of this so that uh, we get to hear from everybody. And what's a better way than celebrating the new year? than to start off with a group of friends that are all on the same page. Exactly. Dylan, I, I can't wait. Are you excited? I am. Like I said, I lost my, I lost my left shoe and I think the cat took the right. <laughs> oh my gosh. I should fi- hopefully you're... find it in time. If not, like you said, I can join through Reddit or I can join through the Discord. I can't wait. Well, I will see you guys all there and everybody listening. We hope to have you be a part of our special night. It's the season one finale. If you're enjoying the Let's Be Nerds podcast, please come join us and let's kick off the new year together and safely and social distance and just kind of be a part of a group where everybody's welcome and everybody's accepted. Hope to see you there. Welcome to Let's Be Nerds. I'm your host, Stephen Jay. And today I am joined by Gordon, Lizette, and Dylan. How are you guys doing? A pot of tea. I'm happy. happy what kind of tea is it? Um, Elderberry Cylon. Or Kylon. Cylon. Ooh. That sounds good. That does sound good. It's really good. <laughs> so, Alec Baldwin. <laughs> okay. Caught and killed and wounded a cameraman and a director or producer of uh, the movie Rust that he's on. 
everyone wants to blame the prop guy and try to get the prop guy in trouble because it's a prop gun. The props guy should be in trouble. False. Anyone, I'm sure all four of us can agree with the statement that I'm about to say. Everyone knows you always check a gun no matter how many times it has been checked beforehand. No matter, it doesn't matter if every single person in the room tells you that gun is empty, you still open the fucker up. It could be a Nerf sh- gun. Mm-hmm. Or a BB check. gun. You always check You to still make sure treat it like an active is- firearm no matter what situation it has been through. Yep. Killed the film's cinematographer and wounded its director. Um, can you? I, I can you believe there's people saying that Alec Baldwin is not at fault? I like, believe he. I believe it's negligence. Just for anyone discharge that has of a fire ever off. shot a fake gun and a real gun, you can tell the difference between blanks and actual ammunition. But the thing, the thing is, you can feel what, the weight. Mm-hmm. That is true. You got to think, though, this is some Hollywood schmuck that probably has never held a real gun in his life. And then there's reports that are, know. there's reports coming out that they found a man his age. I this. find it very hard to believe that he's never handled a firearm before. Me too. Trust me, I find my that statement I made very hard to believe myself because, again, he's an actor, I'll, I can't imagine there's a single actor out there that doesn't own a firearm or have had fun with a firearm to some degree. It just just doesn't make sense. You know, something else that's interesting in this, so I pulled up an article from New York Times um, in this article. Oh, you're artic- the same one as me, great. Okay. Um, towards the bottom of it, they, they make a comment where they said there were at least two accidental gun discharges on the set days before the shooting happened, according to three former members of the film's crew. And they walked and, out. People walked out. Yeah, well, they're, they're saying no one was... Uh, one, about five different people resigned. They, no, they, uh, I appreciate sure the and entire stated old something camera about crew. There was left. a lack of safety meetings near the end. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the entire um, initial camera crew up and walked out. I think, or most of the old camera crew just was like, screw this, this is not okay, we are not safe here, and they said, this isn't worth the paycheck. And it looks like the sheriff that's investigating this is reporting that he, they found 500 rounds on the set. Why? Like, Yeah, what reason would you have for having live rounds on a movie set? There's no, no reason. Um... You guys. The only feasible reason is because they're going for realistic shooting scenes, but if they were mm-hmm. doing that, they were not properly prepared or doing the safety checks as a stunt crew should on such films. But this falls on well, everyone's they, head, in a they sense. They would never use real ammunition in a movie. I can't think of a single movie where they would okay live ammunition to be used. The, the um very few the, that's the, ar- the problem well here's the thing she says the the armor for this production told an investigator that no live ammunition and this is in quotation marks is ever kept on set mm-hmm. but then she they're saying that she's not responded to any request for comment beyond that according to the daily mail and the Associated Press, this also opens him up. Even if he's not criminally charged, this will this could open him up to like civil lawsuits as well. For I guess because he was technically credited as a producer on the set, even if they don't charge him, this this is gonna this is gonna be big. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And apparently they were they were shooting cans with live out uh, with live ammo just hours before the tragic death of. I can't pronounce her name, and I apologize. Um, but it looks like people on the crew were, were shooting the cans with the live ammo. I believe the woman who passed away, her name was H-A-L-Y-N-A Hutchins. Helena? Helena Hutchins? I, I think, I think so. that's right. It, I don't know, though. It's I would say Helene. It's a rabbit hole that's going to lead to a lot of changes with Hollywood standards. 
yeah. when Whether it comes to gun safety. Mm -hmm. uh, good or bad, it's going to bring in a lot of changes. Like you said, it will probably ban the use of even blank cartridges unless they have a highly specialized team that is only focused on the safety like that, which they should have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, not to necessarily like bash anybody's age, but I who was um, the article just that I was reading just had the armorer's age in it, and she's fairly young. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know, I wouldn't put someone... Even Steven, like yours and my age, I wouldn't put one of us in charge of that on a movie set if you're going to have live rounds. Mm -hmm. I would want someone with your dad's level of experience. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I don't know. Just like a whole. For... Oh, go on. No, for for me personally, I I took four. I've taken four levels of safety classes, and I think that's fairly good. You know, I think that's a good mm -hmm. practice. But I wouldn't want to be in that position. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I... <sighs> yeah, no, that's that's the level of responsibility you're putting in someone's hand where basically everyone's life, including your own, is in your hands for that safety. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you're not staying on top of that and keeping on top of everyone else, I don't care if it's your head director that hired you. You tell them to check and triple check whatever weapon you just handed them. I don't care if it's made of foam. You get that process ingrained in somebody. Even if you're only working for them for that day, you make sure they walked away having known the same safety you have, or should have at least, when handling such a process. Mm -hmm. I think the next point that we need to get into is the, the disparage... I don't even know what the right word is. The disconnect on media coverage based on somebody's celebrity status based on their political affiliation there's a lot that we need to dive into on that but before we do let's take a quick break we're going to hear from our sponsor and we will be right back and we're back so this is another thing that we need to talk about is the media coverage and the attention on this i don't know about you guys but I have a very huge problem with a lot of mainstream news outlets as of late because they it's like they cherry pick, they pick and choose. I think that this applies in this Alec Baldwin situation because it seems like most of the mainstream outlets are almost trying to protect him and paint, you know, other people as the issue. And that very well may be true. Maybe they will find he was totally innocent or what have you, but until the investigation is complete until there is charges, until there is a verdict. The way that this should be reported should be simply factual. It shouldn't be some puff piece about how Alec Baldwin's a great guy and this armorer that's young is the problem. They shouldn't be trying to influence our opinion before the facts and the the process. Like if, it, if okay, let's say the four of us were making an independent film and God forbid something like this happened, we would... The way it would be reported would be local media, in the news, whatever, but it wouldn't be like already trying to protect somebody. And yeah. if, if you look at Alec Baldwin's career and you look at mainstream media, for most of the sources that we're referring to, hated Donald Trump. Alec Baldwin portrayed Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live and was openly and publicly speaking out against him. And so now, and it's not about whether you agree or disagree with what he, that or whatever, but it's looking at the fact that he's now under all of this protection. And it seems like every other article you look at, in my opinion, seems to be almost in defense of him. That is not, it's, it's not ethical journalism, in my opinion. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but it just, yeah, it's just frustrating. I think I understand what you're saying. I'm sorry. I'm trying to, while we were on break, I've been trying to look up information on other deaths on movie sets, and I'm not finding the specific information I was looking for. Um, I was trying to see what procedures, what things have changed over the years due to other deaths happening on screen or in, in production. Have you found anything interesting or relevant? Or um. <sighs> Not yet. There, there's one in particular I was trying to find, but 
it's not coming up for me. Um, a, another incident of um, an actor being shot on set unintentionally would have been in The Crow with Brandon Lee. Hang on, let me see if I can find that information again. Because I didn't under, I didn't realize the full extent of how um, what happened with that. Basically, what this article that I found is saying, um, kind of similar to what we're what we're reading about happening on the set of Rust, and when they were filming The Crow, it seems like while well, they were filming a different scene to save some time, the prop guys didn't realize they didn't have any blanks available, so they used live bullets. And when they switched scenes, they didn't realize that a lead tip from one of the live bullets was lodged in the barrel. So when they loaded blanks and then fired at Brandon Lee, he, he ended up being hit in the abdomen and he was pronounced dead at the hospital. So I don't, I don't know. Like, it's not like this is the first time that something odd has happened from someone not paying enough attention. Mm-hmm. But I definitely agree with you. It's not getting the right type of attention. It just, and I, I, I hate to be one of those people, but it's just it's very hard to trust the media in this day and age because they're not reporting it the way it should be, mm-hmm. in my opinion. No, at this point anymore, with the large amount of media outlets we have, news outlets we have, the fact that anybody can just write up an article and click send to the internet Mm-hmm. Most people are looking to pull out the biggest and craziest facts and throw that into your face to get you hooked. Not to truly care or find out the real truth, but just to get you hooked so they get more views in a sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. They get a lot more traffic when they say, oh, blah, 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 blah. You're like, what? No way. And then you finally read the article and you see you're just like, oh, this is just a bunch of crap. Mm-hmm. With very few truths and a lot of, we don't really know when you could probably you got to filter through a lot of it. And you got to do a lot of reading, and a lot of people don't want to take the time to do that much reading anymore. They no. just want the news as fast as possible. <clears throat> they just want to see a little blink on their phone, read the heading to an article, and go, "Oh, I know all I need to know about that." Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't want to hear more. They don't want to find out more. I agree, a hundred percent. It's frustrating. That's all I know. It's a sad reality. So any other uh, any other hot topics you want to dive into? Are we becoming a talk show podcast now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't have anything that's coming to mind just yet. What do you guys, do you guys have anything? Or do no. you got any more gossip for us? <laughs> Sorry, don't go No, you're good. I live under a rock. I never have gossip. It only applies to where I work, and it only applies to people who work there. <laughs> I know way too much. And I shouldn't, I guess I shouldn't really use the term gossip. I feel like that definitely trivializes the things that we were saying. And I shouldn't. Another example of how things have changed and certain scenarios have affected people. I don't know. I I think there definitely needs to be some changes overhauled in a lot of ways. It also kind of goes back to um, a discussion that we had a while ago when we were talking about how people have trouble. separating the actor from roles that they played do you guys remember that conversation yes we're how <clears throat> don't get um, like always be a hero because like the guy that played joffrey on uh, game of thrones is always looked at as like the worst person ever yeah, yeah. quick acting because of that mm-hmm. yeah because of one role mm-hmm. that's a fun topic is how yeah. one role can either make you a superstar or make you hated by so many people because you played that role way too well. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is also part of what's playing into this incident we were just discussing. I am not too familiar with a lot of Alec Baldwin's roles. I feel like he's kind of played an array of maybe not so good characters and also some that were okay. I'm not a big fan of his, but um he's he's one of those faces you see and you instantly recognize and yeah. go, Oh, that should be pretty cool, or that should be okay. So yeah. it attracts more people and it leads yeah. to a lot more people defending him, especially Hollywood, because he has such yeah. a recognizable name and face. 
Yes, and and that's that was the point that I was trying to make. Thank you, Dylan. Sorry. I no, 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 no. No, you're fine. You put it more concisely than I could have. Like that, that was a genuine thank you. I'm sorry if it didn't sound sincere. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah, I think that you're right, people, and the, it's one of those legacy names. Like <clears throat> they're they're his brothers, his family. They're all in mm-hmm. that industry. Mm-hmm. So you hear that name and you think, and I don't know, and. The best thing is, and this is what this, I'm not turning this into a political podcast, but like, I'm so, I am so sick of like celebrities talking down to us, like telling us who to vote for, telling us what to think, you know, I'm not going to do my Gal Gadot pandemic rant again, (laughs) but you understand what I'm saying? Like here he is and he's, you know, a walking, talking figurehead for a political body. And I understand that. I get it. Whatever. But you are not without flaw. You are not without. You're a human. Don't don't speak to me from your mansion in the hills of Col- Hollywood, California, and think that you know anything about quite literally anything. You you dress up and you play pretend for a living. Like I, you, I don't care about what you have to say. And he's one. He's spoken out about gun control and like he he claimed to know different things. Clearly, you should Clearly never. Not. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I don't know. I just. As much as this podcast is about like films and TV and all of that, in the grand scheme of things, these are all just, it's, it's all for fun. And like when it becomes a situation like this, I don't know. I'm just frustrated. I lost it. I don't even know what that, I'm getting that's at. That's but... something that actually comes with <laughs> when you develop a love for film, literature, just about any topic you realize there's a lot of drama media you have to shift through you kind of have to dig through to find out what you are really getting into like sure you can go and enjoy a movie but if you truly want to enjoy a movie you start to learn about the directors the cinematographers the music directors for it the different just everything that goes into it and one of the biggest things you start learning is all of the background noise Mm-hmm. All of the drama, all of the false articles, the real articles, the spoilers, the leaks, the scandals, as Gordon said, the actual terrible human beings there are that you loved to see on screen. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they are still human. That's a big thing a lot of people forget is, sure, they make a million dollars because they smiled on camera and read a single line. They're still human. Mm-hmm. Even if they don't believe it anymore. Like you were saying, up in their little mansions, dressing up. It's all for media. It's all to get more of that attention on their name, on their face. So when they do go and smile in a movie or a show or even just a commercial, everyone is tuning into it. Not because they're interested in the commercial or what it's even about or what the movie's about. They're interested in it because of the character. Yeah. And uh, the paycheck. And it just it, it just feeds more into the cycle. Mm-hmm. Gordon, what were you saying? I was just saying, very, very inappropriate, kind of throw this in, but I, I just remembered it because he mentioned about getting paid millions upon millions of dollars in a movie that really no one, certain people don't care about, and sometimes a garbage like a certain one by DC Aquaman. Um, <laughs> I like Aquaman. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> okay, get out. <laughs> I was invited here, so you can kick me out any time. <laughs> That's a fair point. Um, no, um, I wanted to b- talk about Deadpool 2 and the character who played the Invisible Man. I- have you guys heard who, who played the Invisible <laughs> oh, Man? Yes. No. Yes. Wasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise. It's Brad Pitt. I and believe it was paid. Brad Pitt. Yeah, it was okay. Brad Pitt. He got Steve, paid. You have no clue. How much do you think he got paid to play the Invisible Man? Oh, it was something fucking ridiculous. It was like a couple million, wasn't it? For like two seconds of his face being there when he got electrocuted. Are you kidding me? You're all wrong. $500,000. Nope. Lower. $200,000? Oh, no. Deadpool freaking bought him coffee and food, didn't he? He bought him a cup of coffee. That's what it was. I knew it was either outrageous oh, or just this hilarious. Is what happened, and this is from Ryan Reynolds' mouth himself, paraphrased. I don't remember because it's been like a month or three since I've to this interview. An interviewer asked him, "How did you get Brad Pitt to play nobody for except for?" And he only showed on frame for on screen for one frame. 
it was one frame of the movie he showed on screen for. He said, oh, he was happened to be um, in the same area of recording another movie, and I just shot him a message saying, hey, uh, I'll get you a cup of coffee. You want to play an invisible person on um, on Deadpool 2? He goes, sure. That's funny. <laughs> and he got paid a cup of coffee to be in Deadpool 2 for about <laughs> one or two frames. You could pay me no. a cup of coffee to be in Deadpool 3, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. You could I pay wouldn't. me a couple million to be in Deadpool 3. I'm paid to be in Deadpool <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah. That's Can funny. Background character 343. The one that falls on his face. It's fine. Can I be the one that falls into the wood chipper this time? <laughs> Please and thank you. And that's why Ryan Reynolds is everybody's crush because I feel like he's actually a celebrity that's that's genuinely real and like I, I, I love, could be wrong. I, I love the stuff that I see about him and Blake Lively <coughs> all the time. Like I I like her a lot too. Mm-hmm. They were amazing. Um, in the last um Grammys or whatever where they all were, I think maybe the Oscars. It was some big event where they were all sitting around getting rewards for stupid shit that doesn't matter because the trophy's gonna. It's all fake plastic anyway, probably. I don't know. Um, the were you there, played... Gordon? Were you there to feel them? No, but um, they can't be. I mean, they, it doesn't matter. So, um, <laughs> what's his name? Andrew Garfield was sitting next to Ryan Reynolds. And he said, if you win, instead of kissing your wife, kiss me. Because everyone thought, like, everyone around him thought he was going to win this particular award, but he didn't. And, and and Ryan Reynolds, anyway, turned and just fucking kissed him straight on the lips. <laughs> he, like, this, very, like, this, I don't remember who actually won the reward, but everyone just saw that happening, and it just drew the attention away from everything else to just see Ryan Reynolds kissing Andrew Garfield in the middle <laughs> <laughs> I think it might have been the Oscars, and I'm about 99% sure it's Andrew Garfield. It was one of the Spider-Men, I'm pretty sure it's Andrew Garfield. It sounds like something Andrew, the, that sounds like an Andrew Garfield thing. Yeah. That's funny. So. Someone could fact check me, but I'm about, I'm 99.9% sure it's Andrew Garfield. That's funny. All right. Hey, it's just... Yeah, it was Andrew Garfield. Oh, I thought so. I, I just... And it was the Golden Globes. Okay, I it, I couldn't remember exactly. It was one of the I, many I plastic award shows. And yeah. Ryan Gosling was the one who won. Oh, I forgot he existed. <laughs> yeah, he his last movie was twenty forty two. I don't even right? think I saw that. It's okay. I wouldn't recommend. It's not. It's nothing major. It's not. It wasn't good. I mean, it was okay. I feel like you're very good. cynical about movies, though. I'm not. I. I, <laughs> I don't know. He's a refined palette for film and so well, Dylan, cynical. Dylan, you I watch like... anime for 12 hours straight, multiple days a week. I am nowhere. You should not listen to me for a review on a film in a million years. You oh. literally, one of your segments for this podcast was re- reviewing the Shang Li movie. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you doing? what are you doing, Gordon? I'm you're destroying your. I don't. Dist- what reputation? What reputation do I have? I'm the, you're just he's destroying his credit, so it's more yes. believable. No, no, I know what he's doing, and I agree with him. <laughs> it's scary that I Dylan, agree with him, Dylan, but Dylan's the only stupid person here that would have any idea of what I'm saying because I don't know what I'm saying. I'm not <laughs> stupid. I'm just dumb. There's a difference. <laughs> no, the, yeah, it's, there a, fu- it's a fine line, and you're fucking tight walking. Tight walking <laughs> the balance here is incredible, but it's what we do. And we appreciate it. Gordon, are you fighting our co-host right now? What are you doing? You're coming unhinged. I think we argued about something last time, too. It's yeah. fine. I live for chaos. It's what, what I was born in. What happens, Steve? <laughs> no, Dylan, you know, you know what it is? And I don't think Gordon realizes this. So Gordon's got a little... Um, he, he's trying to steal Drew from me. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't realize that Drew's already married to you. I was going to say, I've known the man. How old am I? 23? 23 years. Hey, I, I'm down for a thruple. I mean, honestly, <laughs> you can have him. That's why I let Lizette have him. <laughs> like, I'll gladly share him. There's so much of him to go around. It's fine. 
he's, he's as skinny as a twig. What are you talking about? Have you seen him eat? <laughs> I, I, um, I have, yeah. Okay, then. I, I made Tell, him a... You want to bring up the twig comment again? No, there's a black hole down there. I made him a cheesesteak that was like three times the size of a normal cheesesteak that we sell. I hope my boss is listening right now. He probably and... is. Hi, hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> hi, Kevin. And he devoured that thing. Exactly. And then, and like ten, I, and then, like ten minutes later, he's like, "I want I'm a snack," hungry. and I'm like, "I can't afford to feed you." And I think he started eating um, off of Lizette's plate. Shortly yeah, that sounds that. about right. Lizette, I, I Lizette think has that habit cake. of snacking. Yeah. And didn't you have the crab cake dinner? And he was like yeah. picking your potato chips apart. Like, yeah. Oh, you should have just put the crab on top of it. It would have slowed him down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't oh, like seafood. He likes oh. crabs and shrimp. No, he just likes shrimp. Sorry. Yeah, it's just shrimp. Say, Does not like should've, crab. He should have liked the meat then. <laughs> he likes crab. We need to get Dylan or Drew back. God, I'm getting everyone mixed up. We need to get Drew back on the show. I, I'm, yeah. We need another recording session for him to Honestly, have all I, of his people. If, uh, go wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to go to work. I need him to go to work tomorrow, okay? He missed Friday because he was sick. And he... Oh. He was going to call out tomorrow, but he messed up his time frame. He would have had to have done it yesterday. And since he didn't do it yesterday, he's got to go to work. I need him to pay for the damages that he did to the Jeep when he hit the deer. <laughs> the okay. deer. The deer, deer hit him, okay? <laughs> well, <laughs> the deer been unalive. Okay, well, the deer oh. can pay for the damages then. <laughs> oh, dear. It has a very good life insurance policy, I'm sure. It's probably up there with your three-legged deer now. You're probably going to have two three-legged deer. It migrated to Kim's sanctuary. Yes. <laughs> it went the 250 miles just to get to your yard. It's all connected. It's funny. <laughs> it's so the plot thickens. Oh, my goodness. It's thickens like a good stew. I kind of want a good stew now, thank you. I know, yeah, I do too. Um, my oh, my uh, mom made a Mississippi stew or something of that nature not too long ago. Or I say not too long ago, like four or five hours ago. <laughs> okay. I am That's about, pretty long ago. Way too long ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking Great about story. Melissa for the people who, you know, know my parents. We love Melissa in this house. Oh, I had a beer with your dad today. It was nice. Where at? <laughs> Ferndale, it was election of officers. Of course, I voted for your father because he's like one of the few people out there that I, I shouldn't say few, but he's like one of the best people out there. One of the few people that, yeah. Can... Give a shit? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. I said what Sorry, I said. did I say that out loud? <laughs> no, one from, no one from that establishment probably knows how to use. Um... Oh, no, 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 no. no. Shh, there are people from there that listen to this. So. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Well, those are the ones I probably like then. Yeah. So this Mom, Mom and Nancy <laughs> listens, you know. Okay. Oh, nice save, Stephen. Yeah, I mean, we got I mean, people in all places. It's oh, the next time I'll be there. We want to give a shout out to our friends. Let's uh, friends talking nerdy. Uh, when we were very new into the game, they followed us on. Was it Twitter? It's Instagram. Like, they it's followed all on Instagram. us on Instagram. On their Instagram stories, they shouted out one of our episodes, and we appreciate it. And I think we should do a collab. I think it'd be cool crossover and see like get their origin story and you know see what we can make happen more content we make the better it will benefit us both and we are you know everyone's making something i mean i don't see where any of us can be upset with that deal nope <laughs> you switched your tune so fast <laughs> i am a businessman steve Plus, never slowly learning how Gordon is? Always. I don't know about that. <laughs> Listen, We've never officially on shit recording because we didn't want to be mean. No. <laughs> and, and again, like I said, their intentions just weren't clear. And now it's very clear that they are... Friends, not friends. Yeah, friendly and not like looking for... Conflict. You know, just, yeah, and it, they came in good grace, and so we need to show them good grace. As well. Yes, because are really our... mean though, or is that just how you make friends nowadays? I feel like it's how we all make friends because I, just... I mean, if we're being perfectly honest, we do kind of come Holy. with our. <laughs> um... What did he say? <laughs> he's, he's character. 
<laughs> he said we have a tendency to bully. Oh, not us, never. <laughs> no, of course not. That's us. not where I was going with this, but um, we have a tendency to. Um, I can't think of the phrase I want. Try to talk, <laughs> overreact. Well, that's valid. That is valid. <laughs> well, yes, we are a very dramatic family, and now Gordon, you've been included in that. So, congratulations, you've been adopted. I'm so sorry. I think someone <laughs> wants me. Oh God. <laughs> Wait, adopted or did he marry Drew and marry Ann? Oh, God. I married Dylan. <laughs> oh, <Hi>. Christ. <laughs> You're not the first say, person to marry, nor will you be the last. <laughs> I was going to say, Drew has, like, I think he's up to three or four husbands now. See, I'm up to wives. I have many work wives. Yeah, I'm the I'm the only woman he talks to. He or at least that's what he tells me every day. He's like, You're, I don't even have girl like female friends anymore. I'm just like, yeah, because like um, you're in I yeah, do, okay. I think it's kind of oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I had a little funny cough today at work. It's just it's working out the tea, so it's great. <laughs> Gordon, what did you say about your work wives? Uh, not, I said I only have women friends out of pity, I think. Oh, for, that is not true. All I kind of like, feel know. that on an emotional level. <coughs> but I also get told I give amazing hugs, and I feel like that's all I'm used for. <laughs> You're like their emotional support hug. Exactly. The you amount do. of times I've heard my name and a multitude of other nicknames yelled across the kitchen. At least twice a day. You do get very good hugs, though. I pick them up and shake them like dolls. <laughs> Sounds frightening. It's, just, it's just great. I'll have to do it to you the next time I see you, Steve. Uh, I'm good. I'm good, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. We'll come back to this. <laughs> Given these women shaken baby syndrome. <laughs> oh wow! You're not the first person to say that. I believe one of my sous chefs said the same thing, so I did it to him. <laughs> Uh, and Gordon, for the record, they're not your friends out of pity. They just like you now better because you hang out with me. <laughs> wow. Okay. <I'm> <laughs> so you're saying they're using him to get closer to you? Mm. No, they they like who he has become because he's opened up and he's a lot funnier and nicer and happy. I've always been funny, bitch. Mm, well, laughing they... at your own jokes doesn't make you funny. <laughs> yes, it it does. makes you insane. Trust me, I know. <laughs> You wish you knew. Oh, uh, we had oh. one of my good friends when I first started. Her name was Amanda Gomez. Shout out because I believe she listens too. Badass. Like me and her just immediately connected. She's Italian. She's got the whole thing going on. Last name her, Gomez. Did you oh, just think of the Adams family? Married name though. Married name. But who yeah. cares? <laughs> I mean, she took the name. That's even better. <laughs> she hated like she literally quit because of gordon because he was like they were in such a fight and so like i saw her, we were messaging and she's like you're friends with him now and i'm like oh you have no idea like, he's such a good human and she's like i don't believe it i'm like come work with us again and you can see that gordon's like a nice human you just had to crack that shell he was in yeah <laughs> i'm all i'm here for a gomez comeback i know you're not gordon but i promise you she's she's awesome <laughs> He's nervous because he now he knows she listens. <laughs> Silence. I will not. Um, say I can hear crickets. Someone can hear me because I, I I have my words, but I'll save my words. Really. You were raised properly. You talk about people behind their back. <laughs> Howard, you say it to their face. Uh, this is not to their face. This is still behind their back. So I'll just say it when it's not on record. So there's no proof. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But no, it's not that they're using me to get close to Gordon. I'm just like, I'm just a very good PR person for him. <laughs> Would you say that's fair, Gordon? Yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> he it. doesn't he's, sound very convinced. He's your little Padawan. It's adorable. Dylan, um, Drew and I came up with a mini conspiracy theory, I guess. Maybe not necessarily a conspiracy theory, but a mini theory. Drew's involved. Uh, it's a conspiracy theory. Fair enough. I have sat through one too many late night rants with him and going on about random shit. Yes. The last one um, I remember is the dreaming one. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. still on that one. Oh, he'll never get off that one. Yeah. But anyway, um, beside the point. So you know how Drew has his younger brother, Jared, and Jared is... Sadly, I know <coughs> my second brother that I do not claim except for on camera. Yes. So... 
you know how Jared is, and then we know we have Jason and Oh, you Jason. told you told me about this. Okay, yeah. So Stephen made his own. <laughs> yes, Stephen found his own. <laughs> and it's Wait. Gordon. But I actually oh. like Gordon. That's the problem. <laughs> I can handle talking to him. He also has a great sense of humor. Yes. <laughs> Jared, I feel like At least is you would... just thank you. It's like talking to a brick wall anymore that actually occasionally talks back now, but you're confused on what it's saying. No, he's gotten a lot better with talk. At least with talking to me, he talks to me a lot. Well, he sees you all the time. But I've heard yeah. him like just have discussions with you when we've been on like Discord or whatever. Lives that he seems nice. Yeah, no, he's a sweet kid. It, it think, might have just been I've known him for way too long, long this, but... <laughs> and I know um, way too many things about him. Oh yeah, well you've shared too many things about him. So, I feel like know. if I have to suffer, you have to suffer. Well, you know, I live here, so exactly I, suffer. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so we have our friend Jason has a younger brother who, and then we now have our friend Dawson, whose younger stepbrother is also part of this club, and now Gordon's part of this club. Gordon is I will the oldest keep, out of. I will keep Gordon out of that club. Okay. Yeah. That is my standpoint on it. So Gordon's a little bit more social. We've been working on his uh, Not verbal skills. Not social. He's more, he's more fun and relatable. He's also yeah. a little bit older than the other three. Okay. How old are you, Gordon? Seven, eight? I turned eight? 20 and 30 uh, minutes. Yep. Happy birthday, Did buddy. someone say 30 minutes? Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's like a goldfish. It's great. No longer a teenager. Oh. Welcome to your twenties. It could be worse. It could it's be all your forties. <laughs> you yeah, already like thought it. <clears throat> okay. All right. We don't age shame. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say it's not age shame. Us, it's Stephen. age acceptance. Just accept it. <laughs> You're just not gonna question. I called you both co-hosts. <laughs> well, aren't we all considered co-hosts? Uh, yeah. This is me and Dylan's now. Okay, Dylan, oh, we're okay. gonna take over. <laughs> Oh, cool. oh, so G Gordon just wants to take over the entire podcast with whoever we bring him to be friends with, oh, Stephen. Because it's his first time making friends. He's very excited and he's overstimulated, so he wants to like <laughs> take it and run with it. I'm slightly uncomfortable with that wording, but okay. <laughs> My helmet. <laughs> I can see the YouTube drama videos. He needs to get the gruel cup. He's. <laughs> we do eventually have to fake a breakup of the podcast to get the clicks on YouTube, and we'll each do our own like drama video like we'll like do the by sisters moment from youtube and then we'll then we'll all come back and you know we'll be sitting on a pile of cash <laughs> settled our differences and the debate <laughs> oh boy who are you who are you teamed up with during this debacle on my own team we have merch <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, i get what you're saying like yeah team, team who designed the merch me Alrighty then. <laughs> I'm not too bad with our design process. No, you do really good, but I'm the one who has the cricket machine, so I can make the t-shirts and Joke's the cups Joke's on you, and stuff. I have one too. Joke's and on you, Delaney's thinking about labor. getting one. Joke's on you, count. I have a very shitty Teespring account. <laughs> <laughs> My stepmother can make us as many shirts, actually, no, I would never make Joke's on you, I now know two it. people who have cricket machines. <laughs> This Joke's is probably the podcast not... that's going to come back and haunt us in a few years. Oh, you know, you ever make that and you're like, this is the one that they'll dig up and cancel me on Twitter for. Well, just say no regrets and we carry on with our lives. Um, uh, in game, in game. You just have to say that. And then I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Is already fixed. What's, what's in game mean? I hate you. Oh, you just that... said that. And I already know the other two are going to be like, huh? Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> exactly. Oh, is that when so... you can... So you can when, swear when, because you're when, gaming or whatever? No, when people are like, uh, when someone makes a joke like, I'm going to kill you, they immediately go, oh, in game, in game. In game. So Just kidding, like, not real life. Don't cancel yeah, me, please. I, I love you all. Yeah. <laughs> go jump off a cliff. In game, in game, in game. Oh, that's so cringy. That I hate is, you. That's so cringy. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you just like run down a list of racial slurs and then just say in game like no sir that doesn't in give game. you a pass that doesn't I, give you a pass um, I, I was in character that that. <laughs> would you say Gordon I've watched plenty of YouTubers that do that they're the fucking they're hilarious didn't like that PewDiePie get cancelled for being like Call of Duty PewDiePie will never get cancelled but didn't he like get in some scandal because he like support like said something anti-semitic or pro-nazi or something in game or something I 
I don't remember. I can't keep up with all these fucking Just hearing scandals. Steven say in-game makes me shiver. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's so unnatural coming from him. <laughs> Why it's did you like... have to introduce this to two of them? Because now Lizette's going to try to use it in an actual conversation. I can already see Drew turning and looking at her like, what? He's like, he's like um, what did simulation she confirmed? <laughs> Are, are we getting roasted on our own show, Lizette? So... Lizette, say that again. What? He's going to be like, who taught you this? <laughs> he's already done that when I've come home with new words and new phrases. He's like, that's not how you use that. I'm like, but that's what my friends taught me. Your friends are screwing with you. That's what they're for. Lizette, we are the strangers to teach you new things. We are the epitome of that Steve Buscemi meme. Hey, other kids. Like, that's that's us. <laughs> yes. We're stuck in that, like, weird middle ground where we're not quite the adults yet, but we're definitely older than the kids. Yes. It hurts my soul. I am three soul. and a half years old, so... Uh, I'm three and three quarters. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, can we I remember what the last phrase was that made Drew like just drop what he was doing and turn and look at me and be like, what? Remember Great, that, what did you just say? Remember that phase of Delaney saying yeet to everything? Yeet? Yeet's making a comeback, man. <laughs> it I, is. It, it, yeet never left. That's, yes. a, that's a fair point as well. I don't know. Whatever phrases I use that usually get me like stared at it usually come from you dylan hey 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 that means First he's doing off, his job as a mentor everyone adapts my phrases who started yeet dylan <laughs> you started i a i g h t dylan did I who uses it everyone okay you, you cannot just come down. on there and, and say that you did this the the lady from vine caught started yeet i'm sorry i heard that long before. i'm talking about within <laughs> Our group within uh, my family. Okay. Okay. I'm the one who started using it, and then everyone else follows along. I do still. F I find eat so funny. I don't oh, know. It's amazing. I use it all the time at work. I'm like, I'm gonna eat this customer away. <laughs> yes, he does. Go. I've, I've never used that one. Yeah, I feel very white when I use it. I don't like using it. I like hearing it, but I don't like using it. What awkward when I do it. Yeah. Oh, you, that's what know. makes it better. No, I no, I get what you're saying because it's probably the same thing as like me when I hear like a phrase that I'm like, oh, that sounds like fun, but I know they're gonna make fun of me when I say it. Mm -hmm. so I, don't. I don't know. Something is bussing. I hate that one. I that hate one. you. You never say <sighs> that word again. Bussing. I, I can't that. stand it. The only use I have seen for it that I enjoyed was the guy going, this is unequivocally bussing in a Victorian accent. That's the only one that I accept and enjoy. I, TikTok ruined that word so much. Like, ugh. And a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what, what, if you put another phrase? William Defoe meme in the Discord, I will I will ban you from the admin <laughs> chat. <laughs> will you? Could you imagine if, like, Try, people listening you? could see the chat as we're, like, oh, God. Will please. you? Oh, my goodness. Will you yeet me from the cat? <laughs> I got nothing. <sighs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have our thumbnail. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, it's not baked where we just enough, went though. yeet for an entire conversation. It is we're gonna have to bake it a little bit to make it a thumbnail. Add the letter E, like personify the letter E for that meme. <laughs> what, what's what's bake it mean? Oh, God, I'm I so don't know. Uh, make it look crispy. Um, I'm so it's, old. You know TV static. Turn TV look, static you... red and put it over the filter, like, over the picture, way too much, and then you got your deep fried bake meme. I want to kill my. I want to unalive myself. I in game, in game. So, so like, in game. In game. Oh my God. So like, if I'm, I'll be sitting, I'll, I'll be sitting down here, like minding my business, playing like a video game or something, and Drew sitting at his desk across, like right across from me, talking to his friends on chat. <laughs> And I swear it sounds like he's talking in a different language because all of like the shorthand or like phrases and words he's using, I'm like, 
I understand all of these words separately. I don't understand them together. together. I don't understand what you're saying. It's and like I'm, I've taken like Spanish one and not Spanish two. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like I and I can't even give you an example because like I just it, he loses me so quickly. Dylan, you could probably probably give us an example of some of the stuff you guys say when well, you're I don't even put that much effort into it. Like he, he's on he's on you. He's on you. That is the number one thing I've always heard from your lore playing. He's like, he's yeah. on you. He's on top of you. <laughs> right into the mic. That's uncomfy. <laughs> Imagine playing with him for five hours in a row. Look. Well, I think you have more questions than answers, baby. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not very good at making it. Answering, answering. Are we gonna answering. Get- this is the episode where we get canceled. <laughs> and um, we want to thank everybody for listening. We now are featuring... Um, a Q&A section if you're listening on Spotify. Uh, please participate in that. Um, we want to thank Anchor for sponsoring us. And also, if you're listening on the Anchor app, there is a feature where you can react to this podcast in real time. You can send us voice memos and comment on what we're discussing, and you might be featured in a future episode. It's a really cool tool. Anchor is really putting in the work to try to make podcasting easy and available and much like us, they're building a community, we're building a community, all marching towards the same goal. So, with that being said, thank you for listening, and we'll see you in part two. Let's Be Nerds is hosted and executive produced by Gordon Bryant and me, Stephen J. McLean. Let's Be Nerds is a production of Speakeasy Productions. Our social media manager is Kylie Gregg. Our managing producer and co-host is Lizette Ayala. Today's guest host was Robert Van Jacobs. You can follow him on all social media platforms at Bobby Dub Music. To keep up with the latest on Let's Be Nerds, join our Discord server linked in the description box below. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Be Nerds Pod or find us on Twitter at Let's the Letter B Nerds. Mm-hmm.